What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Sup FM, your favorite streetwear podcast. I'm here with my guys, Lawrence Deloach. You. And I got Chris Cheney with me as well. You. Happy Air Max Day, everybody. Air Max Day. What a day it was for only you. It was a good day for me. We'll go into that a little bit later. Lawrence, how are you doing today? I'm all right, man. I'm, I'm happy to be here with my guys. And and uh, I, I was kind of MIA last week, so it's good to be back, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Glad to have you back, buddy. Luke, how are you, bro? I'm, I'm, I'm just winning, bro. That's all. Just feeling a real winner's attitude, you know? <laughs> I can see it on your f- fucking face. Your dumb winning face is so happy right now. <laughs> Two dubs. <laughs> it's crazy, man. What about you, Chris? What are, what are you up to? I'm great, man. You know, um, just on the work side of things, now that uh, uh, I can kind of speak on some things that I know are happening, um, you know, early April, I think I mentioned it before, but we got a Timberland thing coming out that um, I know I sh- I've shown you guys this campaign image. I don't know exactly where it's going to go, but you might see my face a lot, depending on this, what this happens with this drop with Timberland, but look out for that. And, um, you know, other than that, man, we're like closing out spring 22. Um, and I'm excited to show you guys that when I can. But other than that, man, I'm great. Yeah. Yeah, you just had a, a bunch of samples, right? It was like some sample cleaning out. What yeah, we cleaned out the office and basically like, I mean, these guys have been doing this brand for 20 years. You know what I mean? Like they don't care about keeping stuff. They don't care. Like they're like, dude, get it out. But I'm like, yo, all my friends I know would love this shit. So like, you know, all three of you guys, including me, um, have a bag at my house from whenever you're ready to get it or whenever we meet up. I got some swag, dog. Yes, yes, yes. Very nice. Yeah. Luke's Asian sizing, though, he makes out like a bandit. <laughs> All right. Listen, um, let's 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 talk, guys, because there's a lot of things that we got to get into, man. Mm-hmm. I, uh, like like uh, Luke said, we, we had Air Max Day. This is, I think, what, the seventh Air Max Day? Seventh Six Air Max or seven. Yeah. This is the seventh. The, uh, 2014 mm-hmm. was the first one. First one. And now we're at 21. Uh, it just seems like uh, it is getting to the point where. Everyone just expects their L's. And we're like I said, guys, there was the Bacons, there was the Clots, there was the Evolutions. Yep. And Luke, you, my friend, uh, were able to hit on a pair of Bacons. That's right. That is correct. <laughs> now, now, Luke, is this for the toe or is this to flip? Or what are we doing here? When Lawrence found out that I won the Bacons, he came to me and said, congratulations with the most heart I've ever felt. Like I felt it through the phone. Like he was texting me. Yeah. He was like, congratulations, bro. Is this is your first Air Max. Day? And I'm like, yeah, it is my first Air Max day win. I guess I should keep these. So he kind of convinced me to keep them. Originally, I was going to get them. I was going to trade them with Isaiah. So I was like, this was my way of being like, okay, I'll win a pair. You know, I'll trade them off to him. I'll make a profit off of like Fire Red Fives. And then, you know, I'll call it a day. It's like a half profit. Wait, so you were going to trade him the Bacons for Fire Red Fives? Yes, and then I was going to sell the Fire Red Fives. But the, there's no real, I mean, there's no real money in Fire Red Fives, if I'm right. correct. It's like, it's I like, have a pair, yeah. Right, it's like 230 Uh-huh. The Bacons were like 160 right? So I would make out like 70 bucks. My friend would get the shoe that he wants for retail. I think it would be a fair, a fair compromise. Okay. You know, but I see what happened. Isaiah, okay. Isaiah also won a pair. So now I, I, I just got a pair of... You know, Air Max is a fit me and it doesn't make sense to not keep them at this point. So for the listeners out there, when he's referencing Isaiah, Isaiah is Isaiah Lorenzo, one of our former mm-hmm. guests. He's also uh, he's a, a guy who loves Air Maxes. He was luckily able to get a pair as well. Uh, I want to know, guys, what are your thoughts on like the grand scheme of Air Max Day? Because obviously we, last year there was, you know, there was no celebration uh, this year. Everything was done virtually. I kind of tuned in a little bit, but I wasn't, you know, I. It's a lot of it is obviously it's it's for show. Uh, did you like look at any of the festivities online? No, um, I, I'll be honest. I think they're going to put a backseat to Air Max Day uh, until like maybe the 10th anniversary or something, just because I feel like the they can't get the timing right on this shit. Like, so, you know, last year was a shit show this year. They did a much better job. But I still think it's a little stagnant. You know what I mean? I feel like because even like in the beginning of the month, we were like, what's up with Air Max Day when years prior Air Max Day was being, you know, shown to us like mid February, I feel like. You know, so especially with things like the dunks sort of taking a priority as far as the sell through, um, not that Air Maxes aren't going to sell through, but I mean, like they just have other silhouettes that are doing stronger. So to have a holiday on it, like they're like maybe like their fifth best selling silhouette or model style, whatever, 
You know, it seems like maybe just wait till they get an anniversary number back. Well, I think what they need to do is I think the problem is every, all their their main selling points for every Air Max day is super limited. And yeah. until they can start um, Jordan 11, you know, the Black Friday Jordan release of, of a sneaker, those type of numbers, we're going to have this this issue where people are just kind of like, OK, here's another unobtainable sneaker that you're promoting the fuck out of for Air Max day. And it's a problem. We saw it in. 2018 with the uh with the Shans. We saw it, you know, and uh and you know in 2016 there was Safaris and you know then we had like yep. the Air Max, you know, we had the um the Atmos, uh the the jewel blue yep. pairs, yep. you know, we, yep. we see this every year with them, and it's almost like it's it's you it's laughable. And when I say it's laughable, it's because every year it's the same song and dance. It's they'll you know, they hype up Air Max Day. You know, they, they used to have these big events where you can go, you know, purchase sneakers. And it was still just limited it, it until they can mass produce a shoe that the people want. Like a Jordan, like I said, like a Jordan 11. Yeah. I'm not saying maybe I'm not saying half a million pairs, but there needs to be more than what are out there. Well, I also think just going back to the timing thing, like they announced a, a like a, right? I mean, they, there's just a rumor about a Travis Scott um, Air Max, right? So like for the holiday, we get a rumor like that's not like, you know, they did it right with the Bacons where like, you know, on the 26th, you know, we got, you know, and Luke at me being a pair like people were hitting. So I guess there was enough to go around, at least like in some circles. But like then you also announce a shoe that we would have really wanted that day. You know what I mean? Like seems a little like, you know, they fucked up on that end to me. Yeah, uh, you know, I won't say they fucked up because this is like prime Nike marketing. And it's like it's a Travis Scott shoe. So remember, I don't think they're just going to shock drop a Travis Scott Air Max no. on Air Max. Day. That's not how that's not how shit works. It's the tease. It's the on foot. It's the oh, my God, we're building up so much steam with, with Travis Scott. But um, they, they are trying. And, and we've seen this where uh, I don't know if you, you guys know, but if I'm correct, it's the evolution, the Air Max one. Mm -hmm. evolution where they had the um they had the sneakers event and and if you were watching the event they started selling pairs during the event so you can purchase them but obviously once again it, you would think that if i'm watching and i'm able to try to purchase them i would get through and they still made those super limited so yeah it, it's just the bullshit that <clears throat> nike puts people through honestly before we kind of you know switch gears what are your thoughts on the the tease of the travis scott uh air max ones um, Luke, hit us with your thoughts first. Dog, when I heard that there was a Travis Scott Air Max one, I'm like, these dudes are listening. To me, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, of course, it's like when I heard it, I was like, yeah, OK, great. Wonderful. I can't wait to see it. You know, I can't wait to see it and, and see what I what I think about it. It'll be probably be great. It'll be fine. I don't know. The mock ups I saw were like very like, OK. But yeah. then again, like, you know, I, I try not to invest in these mock-ups. I still don't understand this mock-up culture where it's like they, you know, I, I get like imagining a shoe, but like imagining a shoe and then pretending it's the real thing and then talking about what that shoe would resell for. I'm like, you guys are out of your mind. Oh, but oh, you're talking about when it goes like all into that craziness. Yeah, they like Photoshop a sneaker, which like, OK, that that's fun. You know, I started designing in general because I, I like that. Shit. It's fun to imagine that shit. Right. But then below, they're like, what do you think the resale will be when they don't even have a retail? It's like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> we have your idea of a shoe. Not yeah, even your your imagination is like within its own imagination. Like they're incepting themselves with this weird mock up shit. But whatever. I mean, um, if it looks anything like that mock up with the reverse swoosh on the Air Max, like cool on brand for his story and what they're doing with him on a collaborative effort, like dope. But I mean, like, oh, what do you think? Um, I, like I said, I, I just don't. Here's the thing. Tra I don't want Trav to fucking hype up Air Max ones now and have because Air Max ones to me is probably my favorite model of Air Max. And like now it's like, oh, now we're going to bring the hype beast to fucking Air Max ones. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and, and that's what I don't want. But, um, but L, but, get him off the dunks. Uh, I don't know, man. Would, dunks you trade, is, would you trade the Air Maxes for dunks? Of course I would. But I also feel <laughs> like I also feel like we're not going to get these crazy resales on Air Max ones that we will a dunk. But dunks are already in the sky. Travis is at the he's at the the the, the landing strip. and He's about the, the takeoff area. And, and it's like, all right, here we go. So that I'm, I'm not sure about. But at the end of the day, uh, it's another super limited sneaker. I actually deleted the sneakers app. And, I, and I'll be honest, I took it off my phone after today, 
after the clots because I really like the clots. And a funny story about the clots. Let's get into this. So I saw this morning that Concepts was releasing them. And on their Instagram, they had an amazing, like they were like, we have bot control. Uh, so I was super excited. I was like, all right, Lawrence. I said, you know, let's let's fucking win on Concepts. You've won on Concepts before. And I don't know if this is public school education at its finest or maybe <laughs> me not paying attention to Asian culture. But the question on Concepts was, uh, clot founder Edison Chen or whatever, you know, what's his ethnicity, right? And my dumb ass wrote China, Asian, Hong Kong, <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I said, yo, I swear to God, I, I was like, I kept typing in China. I was like, fuck you, Concepts <laughs> for this bullshit. And <laughs> Luke's face. By, by minute eight, I was like, yo, it's, he's Chinese put in Chinese and I put in Chinese and then it got me through. But by the time that happened, it was sold out. So I, I this, that is on my dumb ass, my public school education, not oh, paying attention. No, no Lawrence, it's, it's my fault. It's my <laughs> fault. I didn't educate you enough on Asian culture. Oh my God. Dude. I was like, I was like his ethnicity. I'm like, dude, he's, he's China. He's fucking Asian, Asian, <laughs> Asian, Asian. He's fucking Asian. Give me, give me, a he's fucking Asian. With that, with that pressure, I've with a similar pressure in haste, I've fucked up so many things, dude. I totally feel you on that. I just in that situation, I sort of imagine like someone behind me going like, "Chris, we got to get this to print. Send this shit off." I'm like, like typing shit or whatever. Shit doesn't even make any sense. And then I get the final back, and there's like so many misspellings and shit, just because, yo. <laughs> I, I like my I like my questions to be very simple. Like, what color is an orange? Like, that's what I want. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like. Don't hit me with now. What what ethnicity is this man? I mean, dude, he, to me, I thought he was Asian. I thought that was an ethnicity. I <laughs> fucked up. And so I take the loss on that one. And and yeah, let's uh, yeah, let's real quick before uh, we, we get off Air Max Day, because I, like I said, I think it's it's getting to the point where it's so bastardized that no one's really enjoying this. Do you guys have a favorite Air Max Day shoe? Probably the first dated one. You have those, I think. I do have those, but they're so fucked up that I don't know if I still have them. I might have given them to some my someone. I just so Air Max Day specific sneaker. I like that one because it's the purest of the execution. It's literally just, you know, you know how I feel about shit. I like when you get the object and it's commemoratory in that way. So like to give you the 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 red one, the one that everyone thinks of. And then just with the date on it, neon pop. Nice. I like that. Yeah, I wish I took better care of those. I, they were my daily beaters, man. I fucking love those shits, man. Yeah. 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 I Luke, what about you? Bacons, because I own them. You know what? You. Actually, so before we go away from the bacon, because uh, Lawrence, yours was saying you is the dated one, too. I would I, actually I would say the Sean. I love the Sean's. They were such yeah. they were so beautiful and well done. And, you know, I like those. Yeah, no, I agree. That's a that's a that's a high one. Actually, everyone that we've sort of mentioned by year has been like, real humdingers if you ask me but mm. going back to um luke you for a second so we all right you can't when you wear these you can't not wear them unless you wear the bacon shoelaces with them and it's not a complete fit unless you get the bacon scented shoelaces that oscar meyer wiener is putting out i mean excellent plug uh you can use our our code uh, uh sup fm and <laughs> get a 20 percent discount on oscar meyer's bacon oscar meyer's streetwear fresh <laughs> that's where an ad would go if we had them we had uh them. yep that's just actual bacon good job meanie <laughs> that's just real bacon that he pulled up not the laces hold on you're in trouble <laughs> i got you listen buddy listen oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh that shit was so funny but yeah so no, thank you meanie um now i am a little scared that there's an april 1st date on this so i don't know if these are going to be real or not i mean they're not real dude you don't know that <sighs> okay that's true that's true i hope so that's a that's a funny that's beautiful man it's great marketing on all ends from oscar meyer nike it's just kevin bacon you know it's an awesome marketing tool that i think we you know it's so understated with this air max day is the fucking awesome well, and ultimate marketing tool did you fall for the kevin bacon photoshop too oh i i probably did yeah i i definitely did yeah yeah chris. <laughs> chris was like chris was like oh yeah that's a photo it's obviously a photoshop i was like i look look it's clearly it. a photoshop 
it looked legit to me. Uh, all right, guys. Look, let's let's look forward to next Air Max Day. What else we got going on, guys, this week? Well, first off, before we keep going, let's uh, let's do some plugs real quick. All right. Oh, that's okay. true. And Great. then after I got a direction, we can go. But uh, you can follow me on all socials uh, at not that Cheney, C-H-E-N-E-Y. Bless you, Lawrence. He sneezed. Uh, Lawrence, where can they find you? LZD325 everywhere. Holla at me. 325, as we know. Your Just birthday. Quick. Happy Thank birthday, brother. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Did you do anything fun for your birthday? Uh, nothing I want to talk about on there. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Bunch of family stuff. So nothing I, can, I want to talk about on there. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Fair, fair, fair. You can find me at Trevezus, T R O V E E Z U S. You can find the podcast at SUP Podcast NYC on all social media platforms. Link for the Discord is going to be in the description of this video, uh, mm -hmm. or this audio. Mm -hmm. uh, let's keep it moving. Where do you want to take us, Chris? No, because you know what? Lawrence actually brought up, a, a, I think we're going to walk into a weird conversation here because I also deleted the sneakers app. Oh. So. It's weird just because I didn't mention this to either of you. Lawrence, you didn't mention this to any of us. Luke is winning, so he's not going to delete it. But I think it's getting clear that, like, there's some frustration building with this app for real if we're deleting it. Yeah, it's it's definitely a um, it's a frustration because I, it's it's definitely like you get tired of. All right, here we go. Let's do the same song and dance every Saturday or Thursday or Friday. Yeah. It's it's like every time you just know what the outcome is going to be. And then the only time I've, I've hit on sneakers in the last like maybe five, six months was maybe, yeah, like five months. It, I hit on the Air, Air Force One snakes, but they were in such abundance that I was like, fuck that. I don't, you know, and, and I just did it just to see, you know, try my luck. And I think that's that's an honest problem when you're just like, all right, let me just hit, get them or buy them. And, and I'm just, it, it's, it's frustrating dealing with it. Yeah. I literally never hit on anything that had any sort of hype on it. I have, I only have one actual purchase from the sneakers app and it was my Jordan 33s that I bought. Cause I liked the technology that was like, uh, no one wanted them. I was the only nerd that wanted that shit. Literally every semi hype, any shoe that had a post about them, I never got at all. And I tried, you know, for most of them, at least early on. Now I'm like, what? It, I mean, clear, I'm off it because I deleted it. But like, just just a uh, fucking Luke over here with five wins in one month. <laughs> well, I think that's something that needs to be. I mean, it, it's something that's honestly uh, needs to be addressed. And we've seen it with obviously with the Ann Herbert stuff. And yeah. You know, and and you start realizing that, you know, it's like it's it is it, it's it's not a a good app in a sense because then they're like well watch this or do this and you know I, like i said I, I think the majority of my my sneaker wins in the last like two years or maybe three years have been through other apps through other stores you know like i always will shout out premier skate shop i will always shout out nordstrom i mean plug or not i've won things without a plug i've won things with the plug i kith you know yeah. and, and i as as people who hate kith you know i've i've hit on kith i've you know i've i've won some shit you know but at the same time when it comes to this particular app it is um it's embarrassing to be honest with you yeah <clears throat> And you know what? It, I, you know, what's really sort of, you know, as people that, you know, like sort of, uh, sort of submerged in this space, it is like a, it is sort of like embarrassing to like be like not hitting on an app when you're like over 30. You know what I mean? When you're like you're a guy who's like every more like just because every time I hit like, you know, it like submit whatever payment I'm on the train. Or like whatever, going to work or something, and then I get the entry not selected. I'm like, what the fuck? And then I realize, like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, you, I mean, you all, you guys also know that I usually have to get handed something to in order to like get it. You know what I mean? So like, why am I even chasing down this dumb? You know, like when we had Fresco on, he sort of like joked around with maybe there's a winner's pool. I'm clearly not going to be in that pool, so why the fuck am I even trying? I guess that's where the, the embarrassing feeling comes from. You know, I, I will say this, and this is something that I think a lot of people will agree on in terms of sneakers. Like there's like you have your little hot streaks, like, you know, like, Luke, you're on a hot streak. So it's like, you, you know, five sneakers in a month or whatever. And I remember like, you know, there were sneakers that I was hitting on, you know, and I will say, you know, I did hit some stuff. But, you know, when it comes down to the like truly like hype stuff, like no way, like, you know, Never. you don't stand a chance. 
Yeah. So I think, uh, and I think, you know, once again, I mean, we, we get to that point where there's no stories behind the shoe anymore. It's just like, did you, did you, did you press, you know, buy in time and did you get selected? Yeah. And it's like, there's no, like, you know, and I, I know that's an old mentality of shit, but fuck that. I want the stories now. Yeah. I mean, the storytelling around this shit is the reason why the, like, like the bacons itself, you know, like Lawrence, you, you weren't um, you weren't with us when I was sort of telling the story of the Bacons, but that adds to the whole experience. You know what I mean? Like the clots, those are also a re-release. So there's also historic value there that someone could have had to mm -hmm. bring it forward to the shoe that's just released. Right. Just hitting a button is like not fun. It's not cool. It's not an experience. There's nothing based around it except what, what do you got, Luke? You're over there like really holding back. Uh, what? There's <clears throat> nothing really I can say here. I'm just, I, I, you know, I, I win them. I get them. <laughs> it's like, uh, so, not. so wait though. This is this is the sad part about this. Is like, all right. So say they. So that when was that first shoe came out? That was 06? The yeah. Clot, I think it was like 06 or 04, <laughs> one of the two. So all right, what right? So we have like this crazy gap. Mm -hmm. Say for whatever reason, in the, the same gap. So 15 years later, whatever it is, mm -hmm. Luke, you're like, oh shit, I can get them again, mm -hmm. and then. <clears throat> now you're thinking about it. Oh, yeah, I just got them off the sneakers app. There was no line experience. There was no you didn't go to the store. You didn't get to see the meat hanging. You didn't get to see none of that. You just remember I got lucky. Yeah, but like, yeah, then you get lucky. And then that's like the story becomes you less focus on the story of how you got them and what you did in them. <sighs> I, that's, ah. a, that's a that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting way to look at it. I because I think like all all my sneakers, you know, prior to and i always will say this prior to maybe 2015 there was the story behind like it was like oh sure. i remember when you know i did this and this and then now it's like you know like there like i hit what did i hit i hit on the sakai's black the first black sakai's and i remember i got them off sneakers but it was like oh okay cool and then like you said bro it's like okay where did i wear these two now yeah as opposed to the 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 experience behind the shoe Sure. And it I, I hear what you guys are saying, taking away from that, like retail experience of being a sneakerhead in the early like 2000s to now is just a very different experience. And it it does take away from the experience of the, you know, the younger market. Right. They're never going to yeah. have that moment. They're never going to have that meeting a guy online and, and being like, oh, cool. You're here like every week. What's up? You know, it's just not really going to happen anymore. I remember yeah. I got to the point where I knew that it was just a completely different ball game. When I'm going to say maybe 2013, 14, I was at Mercer lining up. And mm -hmm. and I remember talking to a kid online. I was like, oh, yeah, I was like, yo, you, you getting them for yourself? And he was like, nah, I'm just trying to flip. And that's when I started seeing, like, you know, like it, it just was a different, you know, it was a different animal. You know, I remember yeah. mm -hmm. we did the um, what do they call it, the um, it was the, the sneaker with the flag on the back, uh, the moon landings. And I remember mm. dudes, dudes hung out all night, man. This is 2004. All mm. fucking night dudes was, you know, at Dover. Like, you know what I'm saying? And the majority of these dudes, they did want them for the toe. But then it was the resellers. But it was still that that experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas now a shoe like that comes out. It's like, did you hit on sneakers? Because them other websites, you you know what I mean? Did you have a prayer with a raffle? It's a mm -hmm. shit is whack, man. Yeah, we're we're gonna sound like real old heads this episode, Elf. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, man. You know, I I like I like because I hear a lot of the fucking listeners. They'll message me and they they say like they be like, I know you've been in the game for so long, and then they make me feel like I'm some fucking senior citizen. <laughs> but I appreciate it because yeah, I have been. And then there's motherfuckers that's been in the game way longer than me. That you know, what I mean, yep. them, them, you know, I'm in my 30s. Them dudes that's in their 40s and 50s, and they talking about they remember the first Jordan one and. I was sixty five dollars. You hear that shit? You be like, dog, like, get out of here, old nigga. Like, that's how I be wanting to talk to them. But you know, so it's a generation thing. Every generation different. Yeah. So. Speaking of um, uh, differences, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, something in our Discord um, popped up, which uh, we originally talked about this custom shoe that had Jesus holy water in it. Oh yeah. Um, and now. Uh, I don't even know how to describe this shit. Turkey based ass bitch. <laughs> hey, I love my turkey basters. <laughs> oh, 
No, definitely go back to that episode where I th- I don't remember what it was. Maybe we should post the clip on the um this week on the show so they could see oh, you yeah, guys yeah. just toasting me. I'll I'll repost that baby. That, that was- <laughs> yeah, just ripping me apart. But anyway, so the guy who made those Jesus uh, Air Max ninety seven customs with the holy water in them, uh, he's doing another version with Little Nas X, and it's Satan in blood. It's the devil, guys. Oh, oops. What happened? <laughs> You're also fired. I'm also fired. <laughs> Am I sharing the screen right now? I don't know. Who's sharing? You're sharing. Meanie's sharing. Go ahead. Oh, no. Meanie's hired again. <laughs> Meanie's hired again. Meanie was sharing. But yeah, what do we have any thoughts on these? Like, I mean, these this are... is gross. Here, I'll just share it. All right. But Luke, your name's on them. Uh, my name is on them, Lawrence, uh, on the side there. Luke 10, 18, which is, you know, the verse where he's all like, I saw the devil, blah, blah, blah. He looked like this. Uh, a lot of, lot of anti Christ like imagery. Uh, <laughs> do not like the flip, if I got to be honest with you. You know, uh, I was looking for a nice, wholesome Jesus shoe. <laughs> and this guy gave me blood in the soul. And that's, I'm not, I'm not with that. I don't know about you guys, but if I wore this shoe, I'd, I'd be welcoming danger. Yeah, I'm, I'm not with those shits, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm actually kind of fine with them. I, I don't need all the Satan imagery. Like, can I take off that pendant or what? what is that called? The, the pendant, whatever. Uh, yeah. The, the, the pandemonium. Yes. The pandemonium. The, the pentagram. That's what it is. Yes. There you go. <clears throat> so like, if you take all this shit off, I mean, um, I'll just tell everybody uh, if they ask me what Luke that is, I'll say my, I have a podcast uh, that I do with my friend Luke. <laughs> But uh, they're numbered. I mean, you know, what's crazy is like the story here in the presentation is much better than most of the stories that are getting done with actual shoes. Now, that's fair. That's fair. That I, fair. Can, I, I can see that. Um, he said. So the other thing about these is that they're like a thousand dollars. Yeah, it's a lot, which is a lot of money to pay to once again, besmirch my Lord and say <laughs> <laughs> what the first version, weren't they like 170 or something very reasonable? No, they they were pretty high up there. Too. Oh, they were okay. I'm yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm remembering. It's, like, it's about around the same price, but now the resale on those is crazy because Lil Nas X just gave a a little bump to this guy. Yeah, it's interesting that we're having a bunch of these. Uh, I guess I'll say celebrity figures sort of linking up with uh, customizers. Mm-hmm. It's like we like uh, you know people with a, in a different tax bracket they can pay for things and going. I don't need Nike. I'll just do it with this guy. Yeah. I think that's always been I mean, there's there's always been that that um, I, I don't know the best way to put it, but it's always been that market where you do see celebrities. Like I remember when Cameron and all those dudes, you know, dudes were getting the customized Air Force Ones and Fab, yep. you know, Fab mm-hmm. and Fabulous and the shit he was doing. I mean, some of that shit was, you know, we used to look at him like this guy's wearing a lot of fakes, but yeah. customizers and rappers and, and entertainers have always been a thing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I think now we just get to that point where Nike is allowing more artists and entertainers to do collaborations with with the company. So, you know, back in the days, maybe where, you know, 15 years ago when a rapper got some bootleg Air Force Ones and now they allow the rapper to have their own. Yeah, actual design. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So but I, I think it. Uh, I'm not like, you know, I'm not a big fan of customs. I've always been on the record saying that, you know, just something about it. But I, I can't knock the hustle. I can't knock anyone that has the, the a mm-hmm. customized sneaker. For sure. If you guys. So if somebody gave you a, a, a boatload of money and said, hey, we want you to we're going to like team you up with our customizer. We're going to make you like a shoe of your dreams. And we'll sell it to a bunch of people. You, but it'll look like a Nike shoe. It's not going to be like your own unique shoe. It'll be a Nike silhouette. You wouldn't do that. <sighs> you know, you know, it's funny because I, you know, I say this. Oh, you know, I love Nike and I'm a, a Nike guy. But if I'm rich, and like you said, and and I'm getting that opportunity, I'm sure I'll be like, all right, fuck it, sign me up. You know, yeah, I, guess, I guess so. That's true. I can't really speak on that because I kind of do that. What What do you mean? What do you mean? Like w- when I get to collaborate with some of the, you know, the footwear companies with a life, it's like I kind of do that. Oh, in, in your own eyes, you're you're like just a customizer. No, <clears throat> kind of. I mean, in the sense I'm designing 
uh, customizing is still also design. There's, you know, it's not mutually exclusive where like right. if you're a customizer, you're not the designing something. Um, so I, I mean, like when I get to go, like, you know, when I make a call out that they wouldn't normally do, I'm customizing their silhouette. You know what I mean? True. So <clears throat> I, yeah, I guess I do do that. It's, it's, it's similar in that, you know, the execution, but different where I'm getting permission and like, they're allowing it like in the people, like a room of people have a meeting about it and they see it and they go, okay, we could do this. We could do this. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. See, you, you're, you're winning in your own ways, Chris. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, um, to kind of change the subject, guys, we we uh we saw actual a tease of some Stingwater Nike SBs that I I abhor. I think they're fucking terrible. Yeah. So the thing with these is, I mean, Luke, I don't know if like you're the person to sort of go to with this because it's like you know you're you're still in the most of like skate out of me and L. Um, I mean, but that's just a weird brand to do a dunk with, bro. I. I got to be straight up with you. I just don't know sting water like that. As far as I know, they're just like a weird, really weird, expensive skate brand. Ooh. These guys, I, right? Yeah, these guys. Yeah. <clears throat> so, like, I, I, I mean, I don't know if there was any story attached to it. I didn't see any story uh, editorial or narrative being presented. I think these are just like leak photos or whatever. Mm-hmm. So we're back to like fucking talking about a shoe we don't know nothing about, but it's fine. It's it's uh. Yeah, to me, it's just weird because they sell like $600 jackets and like $400 hats. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I'm going to buy them. I'm going to say this. I'm going to go on record of saying this, that 2021 for dunks are trash. Like, I feel like <clears throat> 2020 was like it was it. It was so much better. And now they to me, it was like actual like like uh, thought and effort behind a lot of their collabs in 2020. And then <clears throat> 2021 is just like. All right, so now they're fucking addicted. Let's just throw whatever their way, and they're gonna fucking go crazy for it. You know, Sting Waters. I like the the carpets were okay to me. The Supremes were, you know, they were cool. I like them, but they're lazy. Uh, but you know, I understand the historical significance behind it. Yeah. But like, if you look at like last year's joints, like uh, Bear Bricks, uh, you know, To Duncan's, uh, Strange, Strange Love, Loves. Civilis, mm-hmm. uh, Travis you know, Scott, Travis, <clears throat> Dory, uh, Lons, bunch of. Dor- you know, uh, Ben and Jerry's like they're to me like Grateful Deads, Grateful Deads. Yeah. You know, we we can talk about 2020 and be like, wow, that was like a fucking a sledgehammer of a year. And then when you get to 2021, it's like the residual hype that people are just like, I need to pair yeah. SBs. And like I said, I haven't, you know, been excited for not many of these SBs like, you know, like it's it just feels like they're just living off of 2020 and they did it smartly, though. That's smart. Mm-hmm. That's super smart. Have everyone hyped, and then the collabs, like I said, aren't as to me innovative or creative as last year's. Did you like the Street Hawkers? I think that that might be the only one I like this year so far. Oh, I no, really, I obviously, yeah. Supreme Street Hawkers carpets were they were solid, but I didn't like. Oh my god, I need the carpet. The Street Hawkers were the only ones that I was like, oh man, I could do. I can fucking and and obviously the Supremes, but. Like I said, I think every release last year, I was like, oh, my God, the Habibis, you know, those are, you know, I forgot about that in 2020. Yep. So, yeah, there yeah. were a lot of good shoes last year from the SB. I hear you. I feel like the executives were like, OK, well, you guys got you want SBs, right? So we'll just keep making SBs. We'll just keep making whatever shitty colorways and you'll buy it. Yeah, absolutely. you'll you'll fucking lap it up. You know, we can throw on these general release dunks, make them super limited because everyone is just insanely enamored with dunks. And we eat, like we said before, we get in the, the 50 Virgil shits like it's, yeah. you know, what do you think of the the golfs? Do you did you guys see the the golf SBs? Mm. The, the golf shoes? Is that the racer ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys. Oh, yeah. Those are cool. But also, again, it's like, OK, mm hmm. Mm hmm. One of our, one <clears> of the <throat> listeners in our discord, Brad, was really into those shoes until he saw them and became very disappointed. Oh, mm-hmm. rest in peace, Brad. He also left the discord. He left the Discord, Lawrence. He'll be back. <clears throat> he will be back. But man, if all right, guys, just on a on a very separate kind of break the fourth wall thing here. If if you aren't in our Discord, just c- come purely to hear what this kid says when he comes <laughs> back because we all call him Brad with the worst take because honestly, it's the worst possible take you could have on any given topic. <laughs> literally, he astounds you every time. You're like, there's no way this guy could think this many wrong things. <laughs> 
And then he just keeps going. He just keeps being wrong. I like Brad. I like all of our Discord listeners. They're all amazing people. They're all great. The the listeners are great. You fucking Discorders (laughs) are great. You people who message me are great. I love you all for real, for real. Keep messaging me. If I don't respond, message me again. I'll remember and I'll respond back. You guys are fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Including Brad. (laughs) Including Brad. We we do we do like you, Brad. Um, what do you call it? We got raided by the uh the New Balance Discord too. One yeah, Alice's friends. They uh they they raided our our server and uh, showed us some love. So thank you to those guys. Shout out to you, New Balance boys. We'll mm-hmm. cover more New Balance stuff in the future for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bape has a New Balance. What do we think? It's a Bape New Balance. Done. Done. <laughs> <laughs> can I? Can we? Uh, can I talk about something that's uh that's really grinding my gears right now? And I saw. Yeah. The, I just saw the alert as we were recording. Uh, Lamarcus Aldridge, uh, signed with the Brooklyn Nets. Oh. So he was bought out by the San Antonio Spurs and he was a free agent and everyone was like, oh, he's going to go to Miami. And he just signed with the Brooklyn Nets. And uh, it is I am going to say that this does not make any sense at this point. Yo, what are they doing? They are dudes are like literally getting a fucking ring. They are like, we will uh, do whatever it takes. We will sign for whatever because we want a championship ring and they are going to get a championship ring. There is no <laughs> doubt about it in my mind. All to this is all to fight LeBron. Yeah, all to really. fight LeBron James. Yes, I would. This is we're not a sports podcast, but I'm very interested in talking about this now. How that's it literally insane that uh, somehow Brooklyn became the hub of trying to defeat LeBron James. In that no one. Not MJ, Kobe, whoever you want to talk about. No one had a, a conspiracy team put together to fight specifically that person. Yeah, that's, this is what this told. That, Chris, you just nailed it on the head. Yeah, that's insane to me. Michael Jordan would be crying if he saw if he if something like this happened to Michael Jordan, he'd be crying tears of joy. He'd be like, finally, y'all got a brain and figured it out. It's going to take all of you to beat me. That's so wild. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 shocked for LeBron. Yo, he's like 34 and he's he's, no, he's 36, 36. And 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 this is the these dudes are fucking coming together to get a ring. Wow. Good for good for Brooklyn. That is literally insane. Luke, uh, you're next. They stink. Um, (laughs) Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The Knicks don't stink. They're just not great. Okay, here, let's put it. Let's put it this way, then Brooklyn or Knicks. What do you mean? Where are you going? I'm going to the Knicks. Then you're going to lose. They're going to get a title. And then here you are asked out just sad because your fucking team stinks when the other good team has all the players just to beat one player. No, nah, that's not that's not the Knicks way, bro. We we suck for years. We we get hot for like two weeks. We all get super excited. We get high off of that. And then that feeds us for the next five years. You don't understand what it is to be a Knicks fan. You winning ass Boston fan. You don't know what it's like <laughs> all the time. I uh, I'm happy for the Knicks this year. I I always I'm I'm also hoping that one day they eventually get a a superstar guy, you know, to come to them kind of like a Kevin Durant or a LeBron who, you know, who has been was always rumored to go to New York back in the days. Um Talking, keeping this kind of on LeBron, because like you guys said, he's 36. He's still the best player in the NBA. Uh, he's out for a couple of weeks, but we did. Uh, we're getting these LeBron watch sneakers. They come out, you know, on the 23rd, I believe, of the month. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. And um, and also we were teased with some uh, LeBron uh, Laker color Air Max 95s. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually, as a guy who loves Air Max 95s as well, I was I don't know if you saw all the colors that, that he teased on his social media but nice some good colorways man they're all laker themed colorways which is a solid color scheme in general so it's like you can't really get mad with that i wish it wasn't so exclusive to the west coast like because you can't rock that anywhere here and people think that like you live here for real or like you're mentally here but i disagree I disagree. There's so many. I mean, there's so many Lakers fans. There's in New York. I mean, I'm right now. I'm wearing a Lakers shirt. Oh yeah, shirt. I'm yeah. A, and I'm funny. in New York. I mean, once again, I mean, there's there's New York fans in L.A. I think you know. Once again, well, not not to cut you off, but the fan part is super important there because like I can't wear that because I'm not a fan of the Lakers. Even the colorway itself and sort of implies that you like that team. 
You can't wear yeah, yellow yeah, and gold. Per, that's what I was gonna say. You can yeah, wear whatever color. Gold. Yeah, purple uh, and gold. Per, uh, those shades of that, you can wear purple and gold. Of course, I'm not saying you can't wear those colors, but what I am saying is that that specific shade, which is a very specific shade of yellow, and a very uh, like not a specific shade of purple, but that yellow specifically, bro. You walk around with that, people are like, oh, he loves. Uh, either Kobe, the Lakers, or he's from Cali. It puts you in a position. It's sort of like judging from afar, I guess, but like, I'm not wrong when I say that. Like, when you wear the team colors, people associate you with that team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just uniquely LA has such a colorway that no one really else uses like that. Like, with the, say, with like the Knicks, you also have, uh, you know, the Mets, right? But it's still very New York. But it's not as it's not as extreme as what L.A. colors do for them. Mm -hmm. Boston is just green. So I you know, I can wear green no matter what and get away with it. No one will associate that, even though me as a Celtics fan, I am one. But no one will put me there. But I mean, you guys see what I'm the difference in, in what the colorways does for to a person is just so drastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you just got to live a little and wear some purple and, uh, and gold, bro. Yeah, you do. I think so you just got to get out there and wear some purple and gold. Come to come to the the dark side, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Maybe it's just because I'm also hyper uh, sensitive to like the the colors and the shades of stuff. Yeah, you man. Know? You grew up in you grew up in Massachusetts. That's like the sports culture. There's out through the roof. Well, I'm not even saying on that. I'm just saying that like I know the Pantone numbers of certain things. You know what I mean? Like I'm. That's how hyper aware of the shades I am. Mm -hmm. That's true. And what do you know? We were talking about it earlier in the year. Pantone color yellow, it's full circle. Oh shit! Full circle. We're good at this podcast, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how much time do we have left. Uh, we got like ten minutes left. Mm. Okay. Then, what's up? Well, I'm just saying, you know, we got a couple topics. I don't know which ones you want to go to. I think 10 minutes isn't a long enough for a couple of them, but. Chris, you lead the way, baby. <clears throat> we'll trust you. Um, I don't know if you should do that. <laughs> um, I mean, do we want to discuss Chinatown Market? Maybe we can be light about it. We could just be quick about it, I guess. So give us. What do you The think? background on it? Okay, yeah. So basically, you know, we have. Um, the, the current um, climate outside is to stop Asian hate. You know, there's been a lot of uh, unnecessary uh, wrongdoing to that community. I mean, I mean, amongst all the other things that are going on. Right. But the one trending right now is stop Asian hate. Um, so Chinatown Market being owned by a white guy who's not even in New York. He's from L.A. I guess uh, I originally I found out earlier uh, off mic that he's from Westchester. So I guess he has some New York in him, but he lives in L.A. right now. And he has a whole brand based off Canal Street in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are calling, at least with, with my algorithm, are calling to have him rebrand uh, the clothing uh, and not say Chinatown Market just because it's appropriating that culture, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, you, there's arguments could be made about that because Chinatown Market is all, like the idea of it is to create designer bootlegs, I guess. It's just a weird like it's a weird sort of thing to try, try to describe because like Canal Street itself is full of bootlegs of other companies, right? It's like, you know, making fake shit of brands that we all want to buy, right? So some guy coming in is going, I'm going to bootleg your, the bootleg. Mm -hmm. So it's like sort of a double entendre, uh, but then sell it for like not designer prices, but sort of high price. Like they're not cheap. And then the other argument is that, you know, they do say it's like it's it promotes the bootleg culture of like the of that Chinatown area, but like never it doesn't do anything to kind of open the door to con like uh, to the rest of the culture. It just yeah. really focuses on the bootleg part, mm -hmm. which is yeah. what a lot of Asians have a problem with. It's like, yeah, it's like, a, well, I think generally that's looked at as a negative stereotype amongst the Asian community because you guys always, you know, being the source of a lot of the creation, the production, a lot of this stuff, you know what I mean? It gets looked at in a bad light. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've kind of like I've been on this podcast saying like I'm not really with this brand uh, necessarily just off the strength of the designs themselves like it's designer clip art to me. I think that's maybe a harsh critique now because he, he's been able to expand and he sort of like can tell his own story, but it's still based around this flub of like, oh, I'm just going to like make real bootlegs, which still is a weird sentence to me because, you know, this is a conversation we've sort of had from every angle mm -hmm. it's like this 
in maybe in the past year and a half, especially when Warren Lotus sort of like took off. But like, it's probably not smart to like be appropriating with that name like that. I mean, Luke, I mean, you're really the only person that can speak to this with a true heart. Uh, me being like the honky on this podcast, I really can't say shit about Dick. You know what I mean? So I mean, yeah, everybody's entitled to their own opinion about it, right? Everybody, yeah. I want to hear everybody's opinion. Like Lawrence, do you have any opinions on it? Yeah, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really a fan of the whole uh, appropriation, the whole, you know, this whole situation with Chinatown. So, and I'm not really the biggest fan of that brand anyway. So I'm kind of like on, I'm kind of with Chris on this a little bit. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, you know, that's how I'm feeling right now. But yeah, what do you, what are you thinking about that? I mean, obviously it's not, you know, I'm not, I'm not crazy about it either. I'm kind of glad that we're having this conversation about it. A lot of my friends, you know, don't like the brand. Uh, so they don't purchase from it. I don't either. So mm. that's just kind of the end of it for me. I'm going to give you both two Asian points for handling that situation very well. <laughs> um, Hell yeah, dude. Cash those in anywhere you'd like. <laughs> I mean, the only, the only person we got to worry about handling it incorrectly is Chris. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty good. <laughs> I at this, so I was listening to Chris word for word and I was like, don't fuck up. Don't fuck up. Don't fuck up. <laughs> Didn't fuck up. Good. Don't say another word about this, Chris. Thank God. All right. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, you handled that very well. Lawrence, I expect that from you. So yeah. that's why you got the you got two points. He got two points. Congratulations, guys. Yeah, there nice. you go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, um, I I don't know if there is much of a brand if he does rename it though, because then the story is gone, right. which might be a separate conversation. Um, but yeah, I think you know, he's just really got to change it, and that's that. I mean, this is not you can't get away with stuff like this anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it I think it's like it's the biggest thing is like you look at it and it's like it doesn't do anything positive for culture. And and the fact that it just goes into a white guy's pockets just doesn't really help. Either. It doesn't sit well. Yeah, it that's like, I, well, you know, yeah, that's like if, you know, like you said, if it was like FUBU or like some or black guy clothing and it was like, oh, it's going to a white dude. Like, you know, what I mean, it's like a white dude creating it. It's like it definitely has that, you know, like, all right, come on, man. Like, let's you know, it's very inauthentic and it's very appropriating of our cultures. And let's let's do better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what uh, I, I feel like. You know what? Uh, mm -hmm. To this guy, I'm going to give him I'm going to I'm going to reach out. I'm going to uh, give him an olive branch right now. I'm mm -hmm. going to bring a list of names that he can use next week from me. I'll, I'll let him have some of my ideas for new names for Chinatown Market. All right. Let's OK, see. I'm just I'm going to throw some names at out at the dartboard. We're going to give what's his name? Was, is it is it Sean? I want to say Sean. <laughs> is, it, is his name Sean? Basically, just say any white name. It's fine. Sean's okay. good. Sean, Sean's, okay. Sean, Sean I'm going to call you Sean. I don't know your name, Mr. Chinatown Market Guy, but I'm going to call you Sean because there we go. That's what you did. <laughs> there we go. All right, we'll we'll give it to you next week. It's actually Michael, but it's it's the same but different. It's, it's <laughs> Mike and Sean, or even Chris. I'm in here. Uh, Matt, the you know. <laughs> there you right. go. There we go. All right. Um, and yeah, I guess that's you know, we can just wrap that up there. I think that's a great place to tie it off. Um, you know, why don't we just go around of plugs again? Happy birthday again, LZD three two five. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh Trovesis, uh, you know, Jesus, Passover. Oh yeah, Meanie's th throwing notes at us. Yes. Uh and also, you know, happy pa Passover to all our Jewish uh listeners. Uh Jewish community here is strong. Um, and uh, I'm at not that Cheney, C H E N E Y, Discord, Instagram, email, all that is on the Instagram at sub podcast NYC. Um, just go there. And also, Three Meanie, our producer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lawrence, you just started a new podcast recently. Can you tell me about that? It's called uh, I Hate This Job. And uh, and actually, I really I do hate my job. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There oh, you yeah. go. Uh, very good episode last week with Karen. Very funny. I love Karen Feehan. She's amazing. Yeah. So everybody check that out as well. Uh, when you got some extra time, it's a good podcast. I promise. And that's it. You jabronis. Uh, see you next week. Peace. Be safe. <laughs>